Diana Ross and Smokey Robinson are Michael Jackson's real parents. He was the Jackson family's talent, which is why there were speculations that he was Evan Ross's father. When Michael was born, Smokey would have been 18 and Diana would have been 14, so Barry Gordy arranged to have the child given to his former boxing partner and fellow Chicagoan musician, Joe Jackson, whom he would finance, resulting in the formation of the Jackson. Michael would receive all of his requirements from Joe's large family while being raised as an artist, and Motown could maintain their reputation by removing the youngster from the picture. Before we explain it further, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. As it turns out, the youngster has talent. Although the Jackson 5 are well known for making it to Motown, Diana Ross has been seen in Gary, Indiana on numerous occasions before that, including at the school talent contest when the Jackson 5 performed. She has joked about Michael being her son in a future film and has declared on live air that he is her baby or child and that she is doing everything for him. She has also stated in the media that she had a crush on Smokey Robinson while growing up and sharing a Detroit street with him, which is strange considering that he had a girlfriend at the time who he subsequently married. Also, Diana switched high schools about the time Michael was born, when she would have gotten pregnant. Smokey enrolled in an engineering program at the same time as she did since they were about to become parents and Motown hadn't yet achieved mainstream success. She was attending Castec to study home economics at the time. Michael has said that when the Jackson 5 performed at Barry's home for a Motown gathering a decade later after their Motown audition in Detroit, Diana told them she wanted to take a special interest in their career. In the movie Double Platinum, played by Diana Ross, the mother who abandoned her child to pursue her career later confesses to the child that she is indeed her mother and proceeds to support the child's career, which is similar to Michael's real-life experience. Diana wore a similar shirt when she performed with Michael throughout the 1980s. Diana's daughter also dons a frock in the movie while singing that has the same glittering blue pattern as the shirt Michael wore during his performance of Billie Jean at Motown 25. Michael claims in his autobiography Moonwalk that he and the Jackson family resided with Diana Ross in the Hollywood Hills when the Jackson 5 first relocated to Los Angeles after signing with Motown, and that the two of them used to go out virtually every day. Michael would have been around 10 years old at the time Diana Ross told him that she is his mother, which is why he started to be more reserved and quiet after that. Smokey Robinson added as he was leaving the Larry King interview shortly after Michael's passing that one of his favorite memories of Michael was when he used to play golf with him and Bobby Taylor when he was around 10 or 11 years old. Michael also intended this when he sang, this happened much too soon, she called me to her chamber, in the song Billie Jean. The statement I am the one, but the child is not my son was made by Diana. She meant that even though I am your mother, you are no longer my son, instead, you are now a Jackson. Billie Jean is played by Diana Ross in the film Lady Sings the Blues, which was released a few years before The Wiz with MJ. Diana plays Billie Holiday in that film. As a groupie who grew up on the same street as Smokey Robinson, Diana Ross is the subject of the song Dirty Diana, which tells the story of how she got Michael by seducing Smokey. Then there is the song Who Is It, which tells the story of an unknown person who left Michael. In the music video, he is shown holding a card that reads Diana. In addition, the song Wanna Be Starting Something makes another allusion to the unidentified Billy Jean figure by saying, if you can't feed your baby, then don't have a baby. In the song Leave Me Alone, he makes a reference to Ain't No Mountain High Enough by saying, don't you come walking begging back, mama. Moreover, in the song's Baby Be Mine, Speechless, and Keep the Faith, he alludes to Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Diana Ross was recently seen on camera singing You Are Not Alone to Katherine Jackson, much like she sang Ain't No Mountain High Enough to Michael back when he lived with her. Diana soothes her missing daughter to sleep with a well-known song in the aforementioned film Double Platinum. In the TMZ video, the elderly and senile Joe states, I raised Michael, he's my son, and Quincy Jones knows better, in the movie The Last Time We Saw Joe Jackson. I never discuss it in conversation. For some reason that is now unknown, he is supporting the alleged notion that Michael is his son, and even in earlier interviews, he consistently highlighted he's a Jackson. Joe stated that he was doing fantastic and that the family was doing very well in an interview the week after Michael's untimely death, while Smokey Robinson spoke about what a phenomenal musician Michael Jackson was on The Larry King Show. This theory explains why Michael was a musical prodigy with the stage presence and songwriting skills of his real parents and why he not only looks like Diana Ross and shares her features and eyes, 
but also why his facial structure resembles Smokey's and their profiles and ears are completely identical. Diana, Smokey, and Michael are the only three musicians, aside from the Beatles, who have two stars each on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now, you can notice how different from his brother's eyes they look and how much they like Ross's eyes. Now you understand how his personality evolved in the manner that it did. It's the reason he adopted an orphan persona, went by the name Peter Pan, created Neverland to aid underprivileged children, distanced himself from his family, and was unable to maintain healthy relationships with women. Since they started working with him from the tender age of five when he first displayed the talent, it completely explains why he had such a serious identity issue and why he claimed to have never known a childhood. And that explains why Joe Jackson is rumored to despise Diana Ross and why Katherine Jackson comes in front of Diana Ross in his will when it comes to who would care for his children. Smokey Robinson reads a letter from Diana Ross, who writes that she is in such deep sadness that she is unable to attend the funeral and that Michael was part of the fabric of her existence, as the first person to enter the public memorial for Michael Jackson. Hence, contrary to popular belief, Michael wasn't ever trying to resemble Diana Ross, rather, he was showing traits and behaviors that he had inherited from her. Take close attention to one of the videos below when she claims that he shares many of her features, including her bone structure and skin tone. Now, you could reply, well, Janet looks a lot like Michael, but growing up in his shadow, she picked up a lot of his mannerisms and used cosmetic surgery and cosmetics to seem like him, as Latoya did. Their vanity was only deceit, though. That's a warp for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. And make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more future videos.